Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Diagnan and I'm an outcomes and evaluation expert and I'm talking here about how to build freeform program logic or outcomes models with a group. Program logic models are simply a model which sets out all of the steps that you're trying to use in order to achieve a higher level outcome for any program or policy or organisation or, or in any intervention at all. There's a lot of different names for these things. Some people call them program logics, intervention logics, results, maps, uh, theories of change, program theories, etc. But all of them are trying to do the same thing, very rapidly communicate what it is that you're trying to achieve uh, by laying out the lower level steps that you'll be using to achieve that. These days when I'm building program logic models, I almost exclusively do it working in a group. And the reason I do this is because I find it a lot better than me going away and working offline, going off to my office and whipping up a program logic model, which I could do, and then bringing that back to a group of stakeholders. I find that if I generate and work with the, the group in the room to build the logic model, uh, there's a lot more ownership. So people feel it's their logic model. They don't feel that it's something that I've just brought and uh, giving to them. They very much feel a sense of ownership, and that's the way it should be. To do this, I use DoView Outcomes and Evaluation software because it's been designed to work within a meeting, on a data projector, on a screen, and it's been designed in a way which is very easy to do that and work with a group as you build the, the logic model. I use freeform uh, logic models when I'm working with a group rather than ones which are layered into uh, often horizontal layers, for instance, outputs, intermediate outcomes and final outcomes, I find a more freeform approach is a better way of working with a group, particularly because stakeholders often find it hard to distinguish between, say, outputs and intermediate outcomes, and you often get caught up in a lot of uh, terminological discussions which can take considerable time about what's what. Now, how do I actually work with stakeholders when I'm doing this type of work? I simply have DoView projected onto the screen, and I put in the middle of the empty screen a box like this, as you can see. And then I will just simply say to people, what is it that you're trying to do with your program? They may say, for instance, if it's a smoking reduction program, they may say something like, well, we're trying to collect information on smoking interventions, obviously a lower level process activity, and I'll be keen on moving them up the outcomes model. Now, the way I do this, instead of saying you've got a process here, an activity, and I don't want that, I want an outcome, is I simply put a box above that box and I say, why is it that you are doing what you're doing in this lower level box? Just let's pop in the box above the reason that you're trying to do it. They may say, well, we're trying to produce pamphlets and posters regarding smoking. That's the reason we're collecting the information. And again, I'll just say, well, that's great tell me why you're trying to do that. And they may then say something like you can see here, we're trying to change attitudes towards smoking, or we're trying to have more knowledge about the hazards of smoking. And then again, we can even move further up the model and say, well, why are you doing that? And undoubtedly that answer, we are trying to reduce smoking. So there you can see we're progressively building up the model uh, on the screen as we're working with the stakeholders and we're able to work with them as to the hierarchical level of that model simply by using the visual space in which we're operating. And there's a very simple rule we use when we're doing that, which is if I could magically, say, uh, reduce smoking, then I wouldn't bother with these other things below it, would I? I wouldn't bother producing pamphlets and posters regarding smoking, etc. So I know that these things lay below the box reducing smoking within the visual model. After a, a while, you'll find when you're working with groups that the screen becomes full of boxes, and at that stage we have to think about dividing the model up into segments so we can continue working with it on screen with the group, because it, if it gets too big, what we will find is that we cannot see what's on screen after a while. We often find that models like this break up into a series of segments which may be something like an uh, individual level, a, an organizational level, a regional level, and a national level. That then means, as you can see I'm moving through those here, 
on the screen, that then means we have plenty of space to add additional boxes to those models. And as you'll see in other videos in this series, we are able to also use it to put indicators onto our models and evaluation questions and evidence, etc. Because we've got lots of room in our model and we aren't trying to just fit it onto a single page. I find that when you're working with stakeholders, the other advantage of working in a group is there's different styles. For instance, there's what I call lumpers and splitters. And lumpers want to lump several things into one box and splitters want to split them out into different boxes. If you are working on your own developing a logic model, you may have to negotiate these differences with the different people who, ha who have these different styles. When you're working in a room, however, you find that you end up just being the facilitator who uh, mediates, in a sense, between these different views in the room, and then everybody understands why the model ended up looking the way it did. And I find that's a much more effective way of working with groups than just developing the model on your own. I've developed a set of 13 tips for building these models, and I'd invite you, if you wanted to, check those out and see if they provide a good basis for you uh, building your program logic models and your outcomes models. I hope this video has been useful in helping you think about the way you can work with a group to develop a free form program logic or outcomes model. Thank you.